morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, I'm sitting on one of the one, two, three projects that we're going to talk about today. Went out this weekend, bought some furniture. My first purchase was this set of six dining room chairs. These are solid mahogany. They're probably from the 40s. In really good shape. They've got some loose joints, some chips, some color touch-ups that need to be done with them. I think these chairs are probably going to sell for around $150 on a Facebook marketplace or Craigslist. I wish they'd bring more. They deserve to bring more, but the fact of the matter is a lot of people aren't decorating with this kind of furniture and these can be hard to sell. Data points that are important for you to know, I paid 30 bucks for them. I think that I can get 150 to 200 for them, probably closer to 150. So that helps you and me figure out how much time we want to put into this. When you are holding furniture for sale, it takes up space. The longer you have it, the higher the chances are of it getting damaged. The car door, if it's, in the, if it's in your garage, it gets bumped into or knocked over. So the pressure, if I can use that term, is on you to get rid of this stuff. And sometimes it's worth taking 10 or $20 less just to get it out, get your money back, and reinvest your money in more, more things to work on. Furniture flipping is not a lucrative business. You're, I'm not going to get rich doing it. There's not that much of a margin. There's a ton of people downsizing. The price of used furniture is low. But there's still money to be made if you buy carefully and you know in your mind what you can get for it before you hand your money over to the seller. So I've run my mouth long enough. Let's get up. We'll get to work. Okay, here's the armchair that I was sitting in. And I want to bring you in and show you something that's, that I think is pretty important. But it's hot here in Georgia, and I'm already sweating. And I sat on this chair, and you see this cloudiness? These chairs were covered with this when I bought them. They had been put out the night before and covered with a tarp, and the dew had settled on them. This is just moisture under a huge buildup of wax. When you see this on a piece of furniture, particularly on a damp day, you can use this as a bargaining tool to get the price down. Say, oh my, the finish is failing or whatever. When this dries up, out, it'll look just like this. And if it doesn't, you just take some mineral spirits and a little steel, 4 watt steel wool, strip off the wax, and start over. Remember, back in the day, the women, a lot of the women would wax their furniture routinely, and this is what happened. So anyways, here's the chair, here's that uh, floral piece on the back splat. This one has a couple of loose joints, but from a sales perspective, once those joints are buttoned up, what's very important are the, the seat covers. If they're all stained and black and disgusting, that's going to put your buyers off, even though lots of times people buy these to recover them. But these are in great shape, so we're going to leave them just alone. I will finish, you know, I'll tighten up when he's be tightened up. I'll do color touch-ups on places like this. You know, we've got a piece of fabric hanging out there. We'll pull that off. You can see scratches down here. We all know how we can do that. You know, we'll fix those up probably with some scratch cover. But the thing is, on these six chairs, we're looking at probably $120 worth of profit. If you want to make 60 bucks an hour, you better get these things fixed and finished in two hours. And there's six chairs. So you better be rocking and rolling if you want to keep your profit margins up. Let's get started by pulling the seats off. Note these are slot head screws all through this chair. Again, that probably dates it pre-World War II, which is consistent with the style and what my instincts told me. And there's the uh, screw that came out of it. Obviously it's modern, it's a manufactured screw, but it does look like a high carbon steel and it does have uh, some patina on it indicating its age. Let me get the rest of these off. Okay, here's the seat. We flip it over. It's got some manufacturer's chalk marks on it, which I don't understand. And then one layer of fabric. This is not the original. Some of the other chairs have multiple layers on them and I'll show that to you now. One of the things that will save you a ton of aggravation is to mark your seats and mark your chairs. As you've seen me do in the past when I mark them if they're going to be refinished I use an imprint tool 
so that sanding or whatever doesn't lose them. In this case, I could probably just write on the back of it and then mark the, the other chair with a, uh, with a piece of tape. But I think I'm going to imprint them just so I don't lose them. So I'll show you how I do that next. Here's my imprint kit. It was a yard sale fine, I think for a dollar. But one through nine on the top and then all the letters of the alphabet and some other stuff. So I'll grab number one right here. And this is the end that you strike with or use to imprint with. Just put it someplace on the seat, give it a love tap. Hopefully you can see that right there, number one. And I'll put it the same mark. You don't want to put it someplace where it's going to ruin the chair. The undersides of the legs where the feet are, my pointing. You know, right here is a good place because you'll see it when it's time to put the seat covers on or you can put it here. But in general, I'll put it someplace where it's not going to affect the chair whatsoever. In this case, I'll put it on the underside of the legs. The same deal, I just take my number one, position it, give it a little love tap, and there it is. Okay, let me keep working here. Okay, you've seen me how, how I test chair joints before. Um, with these kinds of chairs, I like to take the seats off because the seats will otherwise give an awful lot of rigidity to the chair. But basically what I'll do is put some weight down on it and give it a wiggle. And you can see this one's got a pretty bad case of the wiggles. This piece here is about ready to pull right out, which is not unexpected for uh, a piece of used furniture that's this old. But what has me a little bit concerned is the way this arm brace here is wiggling. Let me see if I could bring you in without making you seasick. You can see this where the arm intersects here. You can see how that's moving. There should be a dowel in there and loose or not it should not be moving laterally. You know back and forth okay it's got to you know it needs to be re-glued. Laterally indicates to me the dowel may be broken. And then if you look down in here it's really kind of unusual but these arm assemblies are screwed on to the half lap frame, which means that these will come off a whole lot easier than me having to heat up these joints and pop these out. Now I'm going to tell you right now, before we even get started, I could cob this up. I could squirt glue in these joints and, and, and clamp them and they would pass inspection by someone who's buying these. And then a week or two down the road, they're going to come loose again. I will not do that. I'm going to eat the time to fix these chairs right. Because, like I've told you before, lots of times this is simply a labor of love and not a big money marketing deal. So that two-hour window I was talking about is probably going to go out the window. We're already ten minutes into this, and this armchair needs work. So let me get to get going on getting this thing fixed up, and then we'll see what surprises the other five half fours. Okay, we're on the back side of that loose arm, and you can see here there's a plug that has been removed and replaced with a different piece of wood. If you see what the plug looks like on the other side, you can tell that that's been hacked with. Now, I am assuming that there's probably a screw behind this plug that holds this arm on and that's why this is wiggling and it's not mounted with two dowels like I would have expected it's probably a screw and glue now when I went to pay some attention to this joint here I found out that this entire piece has been re-glued in and you can see glue on the screws I'm not going to hack this off what I am going to do is I'm going to separate and again, I apologize for having a hand hold this camera, but there's no way I can get the tripod in here. I am going to separate this joint here and see if we can fix it right there by spreading it apart. And if not, we'll take some heat and we'll separate this joint here and take this arm off. But right now, we're going to pop this piece off and see what's behind it. And remember, never use your screwdrivers for a pry bar. Ha, ha, ha. 
Yep. Oh. Okay, it was plugged with a, a section of dowel, and behind it is a screw, so let's get that screw out of there. And it was loose. Come on, gravity, be our friend here. Let's see if we can get that screw out. And we were right, the joints held together with that single screw, and all we have to do is re-glue this, put that screw in and fold it tight, and that will act as a clamp and, uh, and hold that in. So by taking the time to look at the piece and identify how it was put together, we saved ourselves all the aggravation of pulling off this, uh, this bottom piece and pulling off this arm. So that repair is not so bad. Let's take a look at the repairs that are going to be needed for the front. And you can see on the front we do have dowel joints. They've pulled out. We have these, I call them finger jointed braces. There's grooves in the, in the chair and these fingers and they're glued in there. They're harder as heck to get out and I, I've had mixed results. I mean if they're, if they're already compromised you can heat them up, you can get them out. Sometimes they just break. As fate would have it, it looks like this one is already loose. So what I'm going to do is um, spread this, this entire joint apart using the space I'm going to get from here and work some glue into these dowels and then reclamp this. This joint here that we just took apart, we can do that with glue and the original screw. We'll put a different plug there so it looks a little bit nicer. And I think that's going to take care of this chair. So maybe we are still back on, uh, back on schedule with these. But uh, that could have been a real mess. All right, let me get to work. And by tapping the insides of the legs with a nylon hammer, I was able to open these joints up a uh, oh, half inch or almost three quarters of an inch on both sides. And that will give me plenty of room to get glue all over those dowels back in that hole and on the meeting faces. You can see here this finger jointed uh, brace came apart very easily so too to this one here. Now the thing you have to be careful of is if we spread these legs too far out we're going to put undue stress on these braces here and this joint here and we don't want to loosen them up. So for the purposes of this restoration this is as far as I'm going to open these joints up. I probably went another quarter inch I could get those out but I can get enough glue in those holes by soaking these pretty good with glue. So let me, I'll get a chisel, I'll clean up the old glue here, we'll glue up that joint, we'll glue up that joint, we will put some glue in these finger joints on this side and on this side, throw a clamp across this and then we'll get to work on the loose joint on the back.
front piece has been all glued back together and I'm happy with the way that came out. While I was working on it, I noticed these two spots on the side of the chair directly under the arm assembly. And what it turns out is that the two screws that are holding this arm assembly in, remember I had told you it had been out and been re-glued, they may have been replaced by other screws or they may have uh, done something to that joint, but the screw tips have run straight through here. So what I'm going to do is pull these two screws out. I'm going to grind those tips down a little bit, and then I'll reinstall them, and then we'll just put some putty over this when we uh, touch up the finish, but we can't have that either. I got that screw out that was too long, and uh, I was right. It's been replaced by a modern screw. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, grind the tip of that off. You can always try to put a washer there or back it out and leave it a little bit loose or... or uh, there's a couple other things you can do, I suppose, but in this case, I'm just going to grind that tip off, and, and that'll be fine. So let me, uh, let me get to doing that. By the way, before you use a grinder, make sure you got your protective equipment on, particularly your eye protection. You don't want to get hurt doing this. And that's all I took off. That should be enough to get it back in there without uh, it poking through the side. Let's reinstall this. By the way, after you grind something, it gets hot, so be careful. There we go. It's in and it's tight, and it's not proud of the surface anymore. Now, if you remember, I said I thought that the screw hole was the screw was loose. That screw looks to be screw hole looks to be fairly well walled out. So before I glue this together, I'm going to do the toothpick fix with this. Basically, you just take a toothpick, cover it in glue. I'm going to need two hands for this. Stick it in the hole that's walled out, and break it off flush. And then when you stick your screw in there, that'll tighten that up. So let's get this put together. Okay, we've got glue on both sides of the joint. We've got that screw hole hopefully tightened up with a little bit of uh, the, you know, with the toothpick and glue. So let's put this screw back in. Now the way this joint was designed, this screw is going to act like a clamp. And as long as it bites, It'll pull this joint together nice and tight. And it is biting. Okay, this is all nice and tight. Now you can see there's no wiggle at all on this. So now all we have to do is plug this hole back here. Let's see what we got to do that with. Okay, we're looking at the back of that joint we've been working on. I put this clamp, I loosened this screw back up and put this clamp here so that the pieces lined up. In other words, if this is the this, let me bring it around and show you. This piece here was not flush with this piece here. It had rotated this way, and I didn't want that. So what I did is I loosened the screw, 
and then I brought it back this way, put this clamp across here so it's flush along this seam, and then drove the screw back in. The screw's in there nice and tight thanks to our toothpick, and now everything is ready to set up, let the glue set up. The last thing we have to do on this area here is to put a cover on that screw. If you look over here, you'll see it's got a round head button on there. I have some half inch birch buttons and if we set one in there just like that it's not going to be exact but it's going to be fairly close and then I'll cover that I'll color that rather in mahogany. The, um, the only other option would be to fill that hole with epoxy putty and then shape the hole but then you're going to have to drill that out if you ever have to tighten that screw back up. So what I'm going to do is uh, install that I'll just put some glue on it because it's fairly it's fairly snug on the top. Remember, these are things you want to be able to pop out, just like that. So I'll get this mounted in here so it's nice and tight. Actually, I think I'll probably put a little piece of a toothpick in there to tighten that hole up, or a piece of veneer, and then uh, we'll get that colored and match the rest of the chair. So that's next. And our plug is in there. I just took a piece of a toothpick and a little bit of glue on the bottom of the router of the rounded out hole and just tap that in there and that's in there nice and snug and if anybody needs to get it out they will. So we'll get that colored and this particular chair is going to be done. And we got our button colored. All I did was take a little bit of brown mahogany dye stain and put it on a, this rag and then I diluted it with a little bit of lacquer thinner and then just touched it on and then it looked a little bit purple to me so I took some Golden oak dye stain did the same thing, tipped the rag, a little bit of lacquer thinner to, to uh, thin it out, and just touched it on, and, and we're real close. So I'll just spray a little bit of satin lacquer on that, and that's done. So this chair is done. Uh, even shooting the video, I got about a half hour into it. So if I wasn't shooting the video, we'd probably be about 15 minutes worth of work on this. And this had some, you know, some issues that needed to be taken care of. I've got five more chairs to do. I'm going to do those off camera. If I find anything that's uh, interesting, I'll bring you back for it. But pretty much the same thing. We're going to strip the seats off. We're going to look for loose joints. We're going to repair any loose joints, repair any major damage, and we will get everything fixed, and then we will get the uh, color touch-ups done when everything's done. So hang on. Well, yeah, I've been at it for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. And uh, the other chairs are in real good shape structurally. They've all had one minor construction issue that I've had to deal with in some way, shape, or form. So I'm going to show you here on this final chair, which is up on the bench. And if you look right here along the side of the chair, and I know you can't see it, but it's the same thing on this side here. There's supposed to be a piece of wood that sits from here to here, and it supports the seat. And it was attached on all the chairs just with nails, and the nails had pulled out and pulled away. Some of them were broken, some of them were missing. So what I've been doing is I always save scraps of wood, as you know. And this isn't the exact same size, thickness as the piece that was there, but it'll do just fine. And all I'm going to do, and have been doing, is just to cut these to length on the bandsaw, drill a couple of holes in them, put a little glue in the back, grab some nails, pound the nails in. Now the only thing you want to be careful of is that you get the top of this even with the shadow line where the other one was, otherwise the seat cushion won't sit flat. So let me get cracking on this, you can see how I handled this. And there you go. It's not the most elegant uh, chair construction, but it's the way all of the chairs came from the factory, apparently, and we're just going to repeat what, uh, what is there. So I've got just this one other one to do, and then all the chairs are done, and we're, we're in under an hour for all the repairs 
and we'll have to move on to cleaning and coloring next. All right, let's move on to fixing the color issues on these chairs and the finish. First step, as always, is to clean them. There is no sense putting finish over dirt. I sprayed them off with crud cutter, and I got a damp rag, and I'll get these cleaned off. You can see almost instantly that the wax that's on these chairs is starting to uh, cloud over because of the, the fluid that's on them. And I'm kind of scrub, to be honest with you, I'm sort of scrubbing off some of this wax right now. The crud cutter is helping to lift it off. And I'm not really sure what to expect when it starts to dry, but whatever it is, we'll deal with it. You know, obviously the, the wax may have to uh, may have to come off with some mineral spirits. Yeah, we have a huge amount of wax on these chairs. And uh, I think it's going to have to get stripped off. I'm going to bring you in so you can see what we're dealing with. Now, if you can see this, this is this is just wax lifting up, and it's it's really on there. I'm going to get some mineral spirits and see about pulling this off with that. See how we do. And this is just some mineral spirits on some four watt steel wool. I would say the lady of the house took real good care of her furniture and she probably waxed it regularly because there is a ton of wax on this. Wow. I mean, even with the mineral spirits, which normally will just blow wax right off, I'm still feeling the wax pulling. It's not the finish. The finish is, is intact. All right. Cleaning and de-waxing. I'll bring you back. Okay, I've done a little bit of playing around with these chairs and the wax issue. And I could strip off all the wax. It'll take me quite a little bit of time to do it. And then go over them. But what I have found is that after cleaning them, if I go over them with some scratch cover and then with some Howard's Feed and Wax, I'm getting very, very good results. The chairs look great and the workload for me is considerably less. If you take a look at the front leg here, and I'll try to zoom in until the, I lose my focus. This, this front cross piece here has been done and that looks really good. And you can see that this leg has been done right up to there. So let me set you up. I'll show you how I'm going to work it and we'll focus in on this one little part. Let's take a look at this. You can see how bleached out this looks. I'm going to take some scratch cover and with some 4 odd steel wool just go over it. And What's happening here I believe is that the oil is mixing with dissolving and perhaps amalgamating the wax that's on the chair and we're getting nice color into the wood and we're coloring out any scratches and I'm having a little trouble getting it into these little cracks here on the, on the top of the decorative crack. We'll work them in. Yeah, and as soon as that oil hits, hits that wax, uh, the wax is going back smooth and clear and it, it looks really good. So what I'm going to do is hit these chairs all up with scratch cover, just like so, and let them set for a little while. I'll wipe the scratch cover off, and then I'll come back and I'll put a light coat of Howard's Feed and Wax on the chairs, and they'll be they'll look great. And that's not going to take a huge amount of time, but you can see just how how good this scratch cover is is working on these chairs taking care of the issues with the wax and covering up any any little scratches into the color coat. Okay, I'll bring you back. Okay, we got a pretty good uh, 
whack right here on this chair. This is too much for the scratch cover to handle. I can promise you it's not going to cover. So what I've done is I've mixed up some of that brown mahogany dye stain with a little bit of uh, golden oak and some acetone. And I'm just going to lay that color in here with a brush before we apply any, uh, any wax or oil here. And this will color it color it out and then what I will do is uh, hit that with a little bit of satin lacquer spray out of a can to seal it up before I hit it with the oil. So we'll keep this dye stain handy and as we find any damage that uh, oil is a little bit, little bit too severe for the, uh, for the fix that we're using for the majority of the chair and we'll have it. And you've seen me fix color issues like this before using uh, powdered pigments and lacquers. This is just another way of doing basically the same thing. We're just adding adding color to a part that's damaged. And there you go, that blends in much better now. That's a uh, an acetone diluted acetone based dye stain and it dries very, very quickly. So here's some, just some spray lacquer I picked up at Home Depot. And I'll just hit that like that and let that lacquer set up before I put on any oil or wax finish. But there you go. Um, this really isn't that complicated. It's just a matter of going through and finding these areas and finding a way to, uh, to color them out. Okay, I'll keep going. Okay, all the chairs have been color touched out and hit with um, scratch cover after they were clean and they're looking fine. I'm going to let them sit for a little while and then wipe them down. We'll put some wax on them and we'll be done. We're at about two hours now, so I'd say the whole project, maybe two and a half hours by the time I get done uh, waxing them up. But I'll bring you back. All right, the chairs are all wiped off. That's how they look and they are looking pretty sharp. Let's turn our attention now to getting a a little bit of Howard's feed and wax on them. And we've got this one ready to go. I just take some 4 odd steel wool, put some wax on here. Now you don't want too much wax on this. You want it to, to be a thin coat. And it's going to be thin as I spread it out on the chair. Work it into the groove, work it into the wood. Nice thin even coat. And between the oil and the wax, well the oil has been wiped off most of it, just a little residual will remain. But it'll give you a nice, a nice thin protective layer over the original finish. really, really spruce the chairs up. Kind of a 70 year tune up I suppose. Okay, we've given the wax a little while to set. To set. It really doesn't, the Howard's feed and wax really doesn't uh, cloud up on you when it dries. Just just let it set a reasonable amount of time. Um, and then and then wipe it off it, wiping off the excess. And uh, it will leave a nice mellow shine in my opinion, on the piece. And if somebody sits on it, they're not going to wind up with a big wet, either a wax or a, an oil stain on the back of their white shirt. So you want to make sure that everything is wiped off and wiped down and polished up. Again, this is a, this is a sprucing up technique that we're using other than the repairs, which we, you know, we always take very seriously, we're not alleging that these chairs will be finished. We're just sprucing the finish up. We're making them look nice again. And if somebody ever wants to refinish them completely, they can. Well, here's the whole set sitting out in the Georgia sunshine, and you can see they're looking pretty good. Again, this was a... Uh, 
really a refreshing of the finish using pretty much just a scratch cover, a little bit of dye, and some wax. And then of course the most important thing is that we got those chairs repaired so they're rock solid. But uh, as I look at them and as I uh, hope as you look at them, they look really nice. And they're going to make somebody pretty happy I think. Well listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, thanks for watching. Best regards. Take good care. See you next video. Bye.